mention uh, <coughs> several, <coughs> about to get frog in my throat, several who uh, need prayers that we need to keep in mind for the individuals, for families dealing with cancer. Uh, Sherry Linderman, Hubert Gibson, Susan Baltz, Mark Vaughn's mother, Nor Vaughn, Joe and Carlene Brewer's niece, Courtney Winters, Julie Robertson's stepfather, Pat Clay, Vicki Hickman, and Gwen Vaughn's cousin, Greg Puckett, and, and myself. All these are dealing with cancer. Jelena Shumpert's grandfather, Harry Park, passed away on Tuesday. <clears throat> His memorial service was held on Friday. <clears throat> My goodness. Please keep Selena and her family in your prayers. I do have congratulations in order for Stacy Harvey and, and John Cundiff. Uh, had marriage yesterday, and so we want to congratulate this, this uh, young couple. We have started live streaming the entire worship service, so this is something... Uh, that's great that we have the songs included and everything included as well. If you'd like to have your photo taken for our online directory, please let Chase know what Sunday you'd like to do that. He's going to start posting these and placing these as an online director. Just a reminder, I know we've been meeting for several weeks, uh, but follow out the rules that are sent out in email or posted on Facebook. Uh, not really supposed to hug, not really supposed to shake hands. That's kind of hard to do. But, uh, Ron, we can do that elbow bump, and I guess that's, that, that's okay. Our song leader this morning will be Zach Goza. Lance Brown will have the opening prayer. I'll do the Lord's Supper presentation, scripture reading by Randy Larrison, and our closing prayer uh, by Tim Johnson. So let's worship the Lord right now. Uh, Open prayer, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get it right. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that we can come together and worship you and le learn more from your word. Father, we pray for the ones that were mentioned this morning that need your prayers as battling cancer and other illnesses. Be with them and the ones that's taking care of them and also their families. Father, we have a special prayer for our country. We ask for you to be with our leaders and help them to look to your word for guidance and bring our country back to you. Help each one of us as we go through our life that we can be a strong Christian. Help us to be able to influence others to come to you and learn more from your word. We all do sin and we pray for forgiveness. Guide us and direct us in Christ's name and pray, amen. Good morning, family, and good morning to everybody on Facebook, whether you're family or friend, we are so proud that you chose to worship God with us today because he, he deserves it. Blessed assurance, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? No matter what happens in this world, no matter what you go through, as long as you are in Christ, you have assurance of salvation, and that's a wonderful thought, so we'll sing that today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All 
the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. It's a beautiful song. Y'all sang beautifully. Over all the earth you reign on high, every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again over every thought, over every word. May my life reflect the beauty of my Lord, because you mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? You are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Amen. I like to spend a little time in silence and reflect before we partake of the Lord's Supper to make sure our minds are in the right place where they need to be. How Jesus begged that he wouldn't have to be hung on the cross, but he relented and said, not my will, but your will. And he thought about us the whole time he was on that cross suffering. So let's take about 10 seconds in silence and let's think about what was paid that we could be here today and celebrate. me in. 
I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod, and to be called the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Will the gentlemen that are supposed to pass out the cups please come up and do so now? Well, what a blessing that we can come together and we can partake of the Lord's Supper and we can be together in fellowship and encourage one another. Uh, I know we're still supposed to social distance, but it's, it's good to see so many here. And certainly those we reach out to that's on the live stream, uh, we're thankful for you as well. At this time, uh, we'll have the men... As we've said before, the bread will be in the bottom of the cup and the juice on the top. And what we'll do, we'll have them pass these all out and, and then we'll have our prayers afterwards. So we'll let them go ahead and distribute those at this time. One day, folks, we won't be having to do this. We'll be back to normal, but I don't know when that'll be. Okay, has everybody, everybody been served? Okay, let's, let's bow and we'll have a prayer for the bread. Father, we're thankful for this emblem that represents your son's body, Christ, who died on the cross for us. Help us as we take this and realize that incredible sacrifice that was freely given and was chosen for each one of us that we might have eternal life. Through his name we pray. Amen. Now at this time we'll remember the sacrifice of the blood that the cup represents. Father, we thank you for this cup again another emblem the juice that represents the blood that Jesus shed for us for each one of us no matter how worthy or unworthy we are because we were all unworthy help us as we partake of this to reflect on that sacrifice given for each one of us in Christ's name we ask amen Now we'll ask the men to come back up and we'll have the offering, which is it's said at this time is expedient that we could give back to the Lord at this time. I think afterwards we'll have a trash can passed around where we can...
throw away the cups if you so desire. Okay, let's pray. Father, the marvelous blessings that you've showered on us from day to day, we just can't believe. So many things we take for granted. Help us to reflect on these rich spiritual blessings and physical blessings that you give to us. And so many times we don't even think of them. Help us that we might give back to you, to the church here, that the work might continue, that we might spread your gospel, and that your word might go out throughout this area. Bless us as we do this. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Hide me away, O Lord. Hide me away, O Lord. In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your wings. Hide me away, O Lord. Give me your peace, O Lord. In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your wings, give me your peace, O Lord. Safe in your dwelling place, safe in your dwelling place. In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your Safe in your dwelling place. So hide me away, O Lord. Hide me away, O Lord. In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your wings, hide me away, O Lord. Hide me away. Hide me away, O Lord. Amen. It was custom that when God's word and law was read, his people would stand. So I ask you to do that if you're able to now, not only here but at home as well, because our God deserves our respect. scripture reading today is from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Y'all be seated. Good morning, church. It's good to see everybody out here today, some new faces, some familiar faces that feel like new faces because it's been so long. Even got a crowd from Paragold here today. It, it's good to have you here today to see your desire to worship God and the ability to do it in person again together. Uh, of 
the things that Steve said that we take for granted, I think now we can add worshiping in person to that list. But I'm glad that you're here. I, I really am blessed by your presence. And I do want to remind everyone, the best day of the year is next Sunday. It's Father's Day, okay? Some of y'all didn't even know that. It's Father's Day next week, so we're, very, we're going to be mindful next week of our fathers, and we're going to celebrate them with a lesson next week. I'm so proud of so many of the Christian fathers we have in our body of believers here at Grace Point. And if you didn't know, or if you haven't been here, we're beginning a new series on the habits of happiness in the life of a Christian. In the world, there's so many reasons for pain, there's so many reasons for trial and hardship and it really just wears you down it makes you exhausted it makes you sometimes feel as if it would be better just to give up but if we're mindful of all of the blessings that God gives each and every one of us we at all times in all situations can find joy in the life of a Christian because of Jesus Christ no matter what's going on we can be happy because of Jesus and I tried last week to say this, and I, I could have done a better job in saying this, but there will be times when your life is not happy. <laughs> there will be times where you do not feel joy in your life. We live in a fallen world of sin, so this life is tough. And if you're not in a moment of happiness or joy right now, it doesn't delegitimize your faith. It doesn't mean you're a weaker Christian right now. But the fact that you serve a risen Savior means that you don't have to stay in that pit of sadness anymore. We've got something to look forward to. We've got something to help us overcome our situations. See, in Genesis chapter 32, a man named Jacob once wrestled with a messenger of God or an angel. He wrestled for an entire night with this figure. And it, they kind of came to a stalemate, and they couldn't release it. One couldn't conquer the other, and the angel or the messenger or God in some form said to Jacob, let me go, and Jacob wouldn't do it until he blessed him. So in Genesis chapter 32, verse 28, he said to Jacob, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. So if you are struggling right now, Keep fighting. Don't give up. Don't give in. Prevail in the morning with the strength that God provides. You can be an overcomer. Don't stay down. Find a reason for joy. And that's why I had the 23rd Psalm read for us. Because it's such a powerful reminder of one of the great many blessings that God gives us. And verse 4 is the key there. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. With everything going on in the world right now, I'm not going to be afraid, because God is with me. Our emotional state is so important to our health and to our happiness. I, I, I'm sure that's something you would all agree with. Our emotions are strong enough to cause some people at some times physical illnesses. So Christians need to, in some way, take control of our emotions, even though they are uncontrollable. Man can't even control his tongue. It's the mightiest thing we can't control. If we can get some form of control on our emotions with the strength God provides will experience more happiness and more joy and less physical hardships. Solomon says about emotions in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So I want you to have joy in your life. I want you to focus on joy in your life and try, if you can, to have happiness. And one of the ways that we can do that, another habit, a habit of happiness that we can implement into our life to experience more joy is facing our fears. And that's what we're looking at today. To have happiness in our life, we've got to face our fears. Let's look at our first point. We've got to deal with fear. Fear came into being when all things came into being, when God created the universe. But the first recorded time that fear was experienced was later in Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. You remember when fear was first experienced? It was when Adam and Eve sinned. 
They were naked and afraid. Fear of punishment for doing wrong, fear of guilt, was the first recorded sense of fear. And ever since then, because of the fall of man and the world we live in right now, because of sin, fear has spread across the entire world. But Scripture addresses this. God doesn't leave us alone to figure out fear on our own. He addresses it time and time again, knowing that we're going to struggle with it. He speaks to it. Joshua 10, 25, Do not be afraid or dismayed. Be strong and courageous. Psalm 56, verse 4, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Matthew 10, verse 31, Jesus says, Fear not. You're more valuable than the birds and the sparrows. You have value. You are of God. You don't have to experience fear. I don't have to tell you. We all know that fear can do a lot of damage. It can hurt a lot of good people. When fear is in your life, it can stop good feelings of love and confidence or a sense of self-worth or well-being, all because of fear. And fear often doesn't stop in fear itself. It breeds other things. It breeds other problems like anxiety and worry. And fear gradually will consume a person. And when we put ourselves up against fear with God, that's important, we really put ourselves up against a big enemy, a a powerful tool used by Satan. Psychiatrists say that fear reveals itself in at least 16 different forms. Anxiety, doubt, timidity, indecision, superstition, worry, withdrawal, loneliness, inferiority, cowardice, aggression, suspicion, hesitation, depression, haughtiness, and shyness. All of these things are symptoms of fear. How many of you struggle with only one of those 16 things? Looking at this list, I've got a lot of fear in my life that I need to face and ask God to get rid of. Is there any area of your life that right now is being controlled by fear? If you're not careful, fear can get into every corner of your life. And in this world, when we look out, especially at those outside of the church, we need to remember that we are looking at scared people. We're looking at people who are consumed by fear. Depression and anxiety and so many of these uh, symptoms that we listed off are caused by fear. And when an animal gets backed into a corner, when they're uh, fearful, we can't be upset at them when they lash out at us. So we need to remember the fear in our own hearts. And we need to remember that people we may be ministering to might just be scared. Their children, if they're outside of the church, their children away from home. They don't have God the Father with them if they have separated themselves from them. And being without your daddy is really scary. If I'm playing hide-and-seek with Sadie and I turn the lights out and close the door for two seconds, she's immediately, get me out, get me out. She's scared because dad's not here anymore. We live in a world surrounded by people consumed by fear. Think, Think again of yourself. What are you afraid of? I try to be a tough man. I try to be uh, rough and and rugged. And I say I'm not scared of very much. But if I go to the doctor and they pull out one of those 10-inch needles to jam in my arm, I turn into a little girl. Needles are one of my biggest fears. If I get get up high and it's unsteady ground, maybe I'm scared of heights a little bit there. If I come across a huge predator, maybe I'm scared of that predator. We all have fear in our life. What are some of the things you are afraid of? Fear is not really a problem, but consuming fear, crippling fear, fear that stops you from doing the good things that you need to be doing in your life. That's the problem, and that's what we need to deal with. And everyone faces fear in their life. Some experience more fear than others. Some have to work harder than others to deal with fear's control in their life. First time fears about doing something new, that's normal. Nervousness about doing something new, that's normal. If you're ever in a a scary situation and your body tells you to be afraid to get out of that dangerous situation, that's normal, that's okay. But when fear consumes us, when fear of something becomes our identity and it stops us from doing what we should be doing, that's when fear becomes destructive. 
So as Christians, as men and women trying to monitor our own spiritual well-being and then those mature in the faith who are called to monitor the well-being spiritually of our family members and our friends, we've got to be aware of this tool that Satan is trying to use in our life. You look at Job, a man who, who Satan pulled all of his tricks out of his bag at once and threw them at him. Satan tried to make Job fearful, tried to make him afraid because that's when he could win. That's when he would, Job would turn against God. It's when he, was, when he would be fearful of his life. We've got to be aware of this tactic of Satan using fear against us, and we've got to deal with it. But again, there's many causes of fear. Let's look at our second point. What causes fear? There are so many ways that Satan can try and bring fear up in our life, and that kind of makes it difficult because it feels like you're plugging seven different holes at once. So your boat doesn't capsize. It can be difficult to deal with fear. And we never really may actually conquer it because of its many forms. Fear comes in so many different forms in this world. And again, some deal with others uh, more than some people. One of the largest sources of fear is experiences that you have during your childhood. During your formative years, when you're growing up as a child, every man needs love, everyone needs compassion and acceptance and support, but children need those, especially love, most of all. When children don't get those things, it can cause fear in their life. My parents are into foster care. They bring in foster children in bad situations and they care for them and they try and put them into a better home. Maybe the parents need to recuperate. Those children sometimes come into my parents' home scared. And it, it really hurts me to see. But even overprotected children, even children growing up in a good, godly Christian home can be self-centered and fearful. So much effort goes into undoing bad things done in the lives of people uh, during their childhood. I I mean, you go to any psychiatrist and you ask them what the large brunt of their work is, it's undoing the bad things done in the past. So we need to be mindful of the experiences that we give our children and that people have experienced in their childhood. So much fear could be avoided if all parents everywhere built up their children and loved them and supported them and showed approval to them and most importantly, gave them Christ. Sometimes fear can come from a traumatic experience in your life. Some people carry long-lasting emotional scars that we really can't see. If emotional scars show themselves physically, we would treat people, I think, a whole lot better than we do. But some people have deep emotional scars from some kind of trauma in their past that carries into their adulthood that shapes every decision they ever make. We can't ever overlook the significance of each individual moment. When we look at people's lives, when we look at our own life, And we see just how much of us was formed in short moments. You look at all of the formative things that have led up to where you are today, and you can't remember every single day, but there are some moments that are, that stick out in your mind, that are branded in your mind that shape you into the person you are today. So we've got to make sure we value every single moment. Some people just have a negative thinking pattern. Some people are just defeatists. The I can't outlook is an outlook of fear that tends to destroy a person's ability to do a lot of things that he or she could have done otherwise. If you stop yourself from even trying to do anything because you're scared of what that might look like, you'll never get anything done. Ordinary tasks become difficult because of fear. We as Christians need to maintain within ourselves and teach others a better outlook, a more positive outlook to overcome fear. Philippians 4.13, a verse I think much of the world knows. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul speaking to a really dark time in his life. says, I've learned to be content with a lot or with a little Free or in prison, I can maintain my spiritual well-being 
because of him who strengthens me. Another large source of fear in our life is what we saw in Genesis chapter 3. Sin causes so much fear in the lives of those in the world, much like Adam and Eve. Many people live in fear because of the weight of guilt they carry on their shoulders. If you're speeding down the highway, what are you on the swivel looking for? You're looking for the police. You're looking for someone to catch you doing something wrong. So many people are living that life spiritually, and it's not healthy. They're aware of the sin in their life. They know the sin they're committing is against the will of God. So they're looking around, ready for God to zap them at any moment. And they're consumed by that fear of guilt and wrongdoing. Many people who are saved, who have had those very same sins washed away and forgiven, still cling to those sins and the guilt of those sins. And it consumes their actions and it begins to cause them to question their own salvation. We also have fear in our life because of a lack of faith. When we fear the power of death, we believe that our past sins truly have not been forgiven by God. It really shows a weakness of faith on our part. Not a lack of faith, but a weak faith. Or when we worry too much about what the future holds, rather than listening to God's promises and God's assurances about the present and about the future, we forget that the future is in God's hands and that he will always carry us through and it brings fearfulness into our life. Think about what is causing your fears. Go to the root and say, why am I afraid of this thing? Why am I afraid of the things that I'm afraid of? There's some things that we need to deal with. And again, just like Jacob, it might look like a fight at times. It might look like a tug of war where you have one end of your insecurities and you've given God the other. At least you've given him half of it. But if you're in a tug of war with God with your insecurities and you're fighting back and forth, know that that's okay. Giving up is not okay. So continue to fight, continue to push forward, continue to struggle to find joy, and in the end, you will find it. But the sooner you give your insecurities over to God, the sooner you will have joy. So let's look at the results of fear next. We know, we know now many of the places where it comes from. Many of us know the results of fear as well. Fear cripples our emotions. Fear's not a good boss. Fear's a pretty terrible boss. It can cause us to pull back into our shell and let life pass us by. We've said already, it can limit us from doing so many good things that we have the potential within us, given to us by God to do, because we are afraid. Again, if we're, if we're backed into a corner, fear can cause us to snap out and lash out at our loved ones and our family members and our friends because it has caused us to be emotionally sensitive. Someone living with fear is, is really uncomfortable compared to someone living without fear who is far more comfortable. Fear doesn't do us any favor socially. It really makes us no fun to be around. People who are dominated by fear, and I do make that distinction, experiencing fear and being dominated by fear is different. People who are dominated by fear don't make good company. If, you're, if you have fear in you, it really brings out your bitterness and your pessimism, brings out complaining within you. And you may find, if you're consumed by fear, that even family and friends may start to avoid you. Uh, we've already said also, fear causes harmful effects in our physical life. These aren't always caused directly by fear, but looking just at a few things. Ulcers, high blood pressure, strokes, headaches. There are so many physical conditions that fear builds up. It, again, may not be the direct cause of these physical conditions, but it certainly doesn't help. If we're constantly living in fear, if we're constantly experiencing anxiety, those will result in hardships in our physical life. It should be obvious that the person who has love and joy and peace and comfort and who is living the fruits of the Spirit to the best of their ability will have more peace in every aspect of their life than one 
who lives with fear, worry, anxiety, anger, and bitterness. Uh, I think about the times where I have anger and resentment within me. My muscles almost get sore just because of how tense I always stay, trying to control my emotions. How better would it be if I gave those up to God? Some fears, again, are temporary, and they really cause no lasting harm. But prolonged fear can result in pain. We're told, again in Philippians 4, by God's word, don't be anxious about anything. Psalm 37 says, commit your ways to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. 1 Peter 5 says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. God wants you to go to him. He's asking you to go to him. And he's telling you that he will take care of you. Because the most the most serious consequences, the greatest result of fear that we need to avoid is the spiritual damage that it causes. As bad as it is to be crippled by fear emotionally, to experience social, uh, bad social interactions because of our fear, or be, experience physical illness because of our fear, the worst things fear can cause are spiritual. Fear can keep us from being as fruitful as we can and should be as Christians. It, it can keep us from being happy and joyful. It can keep us from sharing the gospel to him who knows what is right and, and the one that does not do it, to him it is sin. Have you ever known that you need to do something, known that you have at least some sort of ability to do that something, but because you're scared of what other people will think about you, you're scared your own performance won't be satisfactory that you say, well, I'll just leave that to someone else. The elders can take care of that. The deacons can take care of that. I'm not a minister. I don't know my Bible good enough. Let that person figure out their own life. That's fear. That's stopping the kingdom dead in its tracks because I have fear in my heart. I, I'm not good enough. I'm not knowledgeable enough. You may not be the best person suited for the job, but have you thought that you might be just the person God wants for the job? And he gives you joy, he gives you happiness, he gives you confidence, and you shut them all down because of your fear. I'm talking largely about myself here. I've got so much fear in my life, I don't want it anymore. I'm tired of holding on to it. It can make us bitter. It, could, it can cause us to feel defeated. Fear can cause even unfaithfulness in people. And you've seen it, I've seen it. Fear can keep us from pleasing God. And it may endanger us of losing our reward if it stops us from living out our faith. A good example of our, our attitude or what it should be, looking at fear, is in Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas were in prison. Their lives were on the line. Their heads were on the chopping block. The government wanted them gone. You think they were crippled by fear? They should have been. I would have to change my pants if I was in that situation. In the deepest pit of the prison, my life is on the line for preaching love, for preaching the life of Jesus. Did I deserve this? This is what I get because of the good that I'm doing? I would be fearful telling you what kind of man I am. Paul and Silas were optimistic. They were singing in the prison. They didn't let fear control them. They controlled their emotions with the perspective of the goodness of God and with the strength that He provides. And by them controlling their fear, when they were given the opportunity to run for their life, they looked to the life of the jailer and saw more value in it than their own. If they would have been fearful and God would have given them a way out, they would have run and taken the way out instead of going to the jailer's home that day and taking care of him and his family and many members of his household. So we need to deal with fear and finally we need to overcome fear. And there is so much joy that comes from overcoming fear, our fourth point. The only way, that's what I want me to know, that's what I want you to know, the only way to overcome fear is by faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. 
The more you get into your text, the more you hear God's message speaking to you, the more you study it, and most importantly, the more you accept it, the less you will have for fear in your life. The, rest, the less reason you will have for fear. We need to come to a complete trust of God and His promises. And we need to study them. We need to treasure them. You, and to overcome fear, we've got to confess our fears to God. Don't shove them back in your closet. Don't sweep them back under your rug. Get them out in broad daylight and let God take care of them. I am positive... And I'm glad to tell you today that God loves to forgive those that come to Him. When you're really struggling in your life, you feel like you're at the end of your rope and you turn and reach out a hand to Him, He is right there. Probably with a big old smile on His face, I was waiting for you to come. He loves to forgive those who ask for forgiveness. When we confess our fears we should be able to go away rejoicing because they don't consume us anymore. They don't control us anymore. God is in control of our life. We've got to ask God specifically to help us face our fears. We have confidence in God that, we, God, that He hears our words, that He hears our prayers, and that He answers them. 1 John 5. He hears our words. He doesn't want your life to be a life that is dominated by fear. That's not the life that He has planned for you. But if you're not willing to help yourself, he's not going to force you to be happy. He's not going to force the spirit of joy into your life. If you don't want it, he won't force you to have it. We need to ask him for it. We need to pray specifically, God help me overcome my fear. And finally, after you have overcome fear, we need to praise God. We should be thankful people. I'm trying to build that up within myself more. We need to express gratitude to God for overcoming our fears, proving our faith in Him and in His promises when we do exactly that. In Matthew chapter 8, the disciples were caught in a big storm on a boat, and they were afraid. They had fear. The men who lived with Jesus had fear. It's easy to point the finger, but again, I'd be scared too. I don't like storms. I certainly wouldn't like to be caught out on a boat in a storm. Jesus faces them, and he says to them, you know what he says? You of little faith, why are you afraid? That's what he's concerned about the most, is the fear that they have. And again, the only way to conquer fear is by faith. You of little faith, why are you afraid? They didn't have faith, so they had fear. And in his words here, it's important for us to hear, all of his disappointment towards them. They had lived with him for a long time. They had seen the many wonderful things that he could do for them. How could you forget? Why are you afraid? But also in his words, we need to hear his deep love for them as well. He tells them, don't you know where you are? Don't you know that you're in God's hands? I am here and where I am, God is. Why are you so fearful? Be of good courage. Be strong. Be firm. Be confident. Don't be shaken with fear. Don't be scared of this little storm that the world is throwing at you. Don't hang your heads. Speaking to us now today, don't hang your heads. Don't mope about. Don't just brew at home complaining about how bad the world is right now. I think the persecuted church experienced far worse times than these. And they survived. You are in the boat. Those of you in the church, you are in the boat. I am in the boat, Jesus is saying. If you're in the boat with me, what's there to worry about? Let me tell you, Jesus is here in the church. And the church, again, is the entire body of believers. He's not just here in this room. He's here in each and every one of our hearts. And if he's here and you're here, what is there to be afraid of? Why be consumed by fear any longer? Why not turn to Jesus? Why not hear His words? Why not believe in Him? Again, this is a great challenge. Fear is a great enemy. It's a powerful tool. It's going to take a lot of hardship. But we need to face fear if we want to have a happy life, a life of joy. So don't be afraid. You know, we shouldn't be afraid. We will be, and that's okay. But we shouldn't be. 
That's what makes us different from all other creatures. In the middle of the bleakest situations, maybe when we're even the one who is in the wrong, where there seems to be no hope in the darkest times in our life, we can still say, God, you are in control. Thy will be done. We can still find hope. But that only comes through faith. If you're conquered by fear today, you need to have faith. Apart from faith, you will only know fear. Fear of death is pretty powerful. We as Christians, as those who are saved, don't have to fear death any longer because of where we get to go. We need to share that with the world. We need to praise God for the promise of a new life that he gives to his faithful children. If you have any fear in your life today, don't cling to it anymore. Release them. Give them to God and cling to Him. Go to His Word. Find His assurances and His promises and you will experience more happiness. It won't be perfect and it won't be easy. But with God, it is possible. With Him, you can have joy. And if you're still clinging to the guilt of sins and you need them to either be washed away or to be forgiven through prayer, the invitation is offered to you right now as we stand and sing. I am mine no more. I am mine no more. I've been bought with blood. I am mine no more. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. And He Chase, thank you very much. Thank you all for being here and worshiping our God. I know he has been blessed. Thank you all for joining us on Facebook and worshiping with us. I know you have been a blessing as well. We're going to end out our service singing to Christ. Jesus is coming soon. One of my favorites. Troublesome times are here, filling man's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is that stay. Humbling your heart to God, say from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore. Women meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Home we then will fly. Glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies.
have a great afternoon, everybody. I ask you to bow your heads very kindly as we go to our Lord and Savior in prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time to give thanks for the blessed day you've given us. Father, we also ask that you be with our police officers, our soldiers, our country. Our country needs your hands to guide this country in the right way, Father. It's in bad shape. Father, we just ask that you be with our loved ones as it's here that need your guiding hands over their bodies. May we ask that you be with their families. Father, we also ask that you be with us in the end. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.